Heavenly Father. O Lord, God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. Lord, we ask that the light of your countenance would shine upon your servants today as we open up your word. For it is a light, Lord, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Direct our steps today by the light of your word and lead us further away from this filthy world and draw us closer to your pure and perfect heart. We want to know the width and length and depth and height of your love, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that we may be filled with the fullness of God. Lord, come with greater power and authority and cause our hearts to burn with devoted love to you and love for others. We just ask, Lord, that we would do nothing to diminish the beauty of your holiness or your majesty. We seek only to adorn you with the highest praise. So may all that we do and say in this hour, Lord, and throughout the day, bring glory and honor to your holy name, for you alone are worthy of all our praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, good afternoon. It's good to see you. Glad you're all here. Those joining us online and at Calvary Chapel Chino Hills, it's a joy to be able to be with you during this lunch hour as we feast upon our glorious King, Savior, Redeemer, and husband. And that actually is the verse that we were looking at this morning in our devotional from Isaiah 54. Um, it says in verse 5, For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. We talked about how the Lord has entwined his name as husband to Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, which is his militant, mighty, defending name, which means as our husband, he's going to come after us with a jealous and zealous love. He will fight fervently for us and not let anything take us from his love. Today, uh, during this noon hour, we spend our time in repentance it's important that we clear the channel in order that we can be a clear channel for the Lord's blessings to throw, flow through us. You know, it's said as Christians, we're always supposed to be empty and going before the Lord for supply. And so we need to empty ourselves. And during this season, this beautiful sanctified season of prayer and fasting, the Lord is giving us an opportunity to lay our hearts bare before him and let him with his loving husband touch Touch those sensitive places of our heart, those places that maybe we're holding on to that we need to let go of, those things that are hindering us in our prayer life, in our walk with him, in our ministry, in our work, hindering his kingdom's work and hurting those around us because we're not willing to let go. So we're going to take this time today to do that. And that really was um, what the Lord was addressing with Israel here in Isaiah um, he's, t he's reminding them, you know, I'm your husband. And we know from the history when we read the Old Test Testament that is Israel, though they were betrothed to the Lord, though they accepted their vows at Mount Sinai and were covenanted to the Lord, they were unfaithful to the Lord. And he was constantly having to correct them. Um, you know, God poured out his heart to them in abundance and they were constantly straying and going after foreign idols and false gods. God had set his special love upon Israel. He chose them out of all the nations on the earth, right? He could have chose any nation. He chose them, not for anything that they did. It had nothing to do with them. They weren't special. Only They were only special because God put his love upon them. He chose them to pour out all of his abundance upon them. He called them his treasured possession above all the peoples of the earth. God in his, it was his sovereign grace that chose them. He put his heart on them. He said, Israel, I love. They were his for better 
or for worse, and mostly for worse, according to the scriptures. Though they provoked him to anger, God loved them so much that he didn't cast them away. He held them close to himself. And even to this day, the Lord is Israel's husband. And he's a good husband. He took care of them. I mean, he lavished them with his love. He endowed them with all his worldly goods. During those 40 years in the wilderness, I mean, even their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothing didn't wear out. He fed them from manna from heaven, and he gave them water from a rock. He gave them everything that they needed. He cared for them. He loved them. And to us, as believers, in this age of grace, we have been the recipients of his great redeeming love. His special love for us, it's upon us. And he has been wonderfully faithful to us. He has been abundant in his provision toward us. He has given us everything. He's given us his life. He laid down his life for us in order that we could come in and experience the greatness of his kingdom, the riches of his kingdom, the abundance of his love. He's brought us to himself. And we can all say, I have all and abound, like Paul said. We should be able to say that because all we need is him. Once we have Christ, we have all. We have no need of anything else. We have no need of this worldly material things. He's everything to us. He's been a good and faithful husband who helps us, who hears us, who answers our every prayer. He cares for us. Um, today, you know, as we enter into this time of repentance, we need to examine our hearts as we think about Israel and their unfaithfulness to the Lord as his chosen people, special love was deposited upon him. We need to examine our hearts and ask ourselves, have we been faithful as we should be to the Lord, to our husband, our redeemer, our maker, to the one our heart loves who has so marvelous, treat us so marvelously with his love. He has lavished us with such tender mercies, such loving care. We have lacked nothing. We're blessed to have him as our husband. So we just need to consider how has our heart wandered from the Lord? Really examine our hearts. Do we have affection for other lesser things? Because if we're not spending time with the Lord in his word and prayer, just, just having those special times of the day carved out just for him, we need to ask ourselves, what is the priority? Where are our other affections? Because for the Lord as the husband to Israel, there's nothing worse than to be a spouse who's the one your heart loves has their affections going someplace else. That's the agony of our Lord's heart. He sees his spouse, his bride, his church, involved with other things, having other affections. And it's, it, we just, and we need to think too, and not just where we go in the direction of the things we're interested in, but even our thought life, how quickly our thoughts wander. Even in prayer, our thoughts can wander so easily. So we need to think of those things that um, we desire more than spending time with the Lord, those things that are distracting us from spending time in his word. Because those things can easily become idols. And that was what Israel was guilty of, idolatry, spiritual adultery. It's easy to make something an idol. We may not consider it, but it's the truth if something else has our affections. And it should be our joy to please so great a husband as we have in Jesus Christ. We should want to do that. A devoted wife does want to please her husband and do everything to make a happy home. And that should be the desire of our heart. But we tend to give the best of ourselves to lesser things. 
when we should be giving the best of ourselves to our husband, the Lord Jesus. Our first thought every day should be about our glorious husband. He is infinitely wonderful, infinitely good, and he has so many blessings to bestow upon us. So we're going to go before the Lord this hour and just lay out our hearts bare before him. Let them examine them as he speaks to your heart. Take that time to confess those sins to him privately. And then we're here to stand in the gap on behalf of the church, on behalf of our nation, this world. We want the Lord to come and flood this earth with the glory of his knowledge of him. We want his spirit to fall upon us again, just in a powerful and mighty way. So we're going to confess and plead and pray. There's wonderful prayers of repentance in the scriptures. You can read whenever, like Nehemiah, when he saw the destruction of Jerusalem, he included himself, put on sackcloth and ashes, and just repented for his people. Daniel did the same thing. Ezra did the same thing. There's many prayers like that we can be praying uh, throughout the scriptures and wherever the heart of the Lord leads your heart, we'll do that today. So let's just go before the Lord. Let's lay our hearts open to him. Let's give him our whole hearts and let him examine them and show us where we haven't done that. So let's pray. And please, you're welcome to come up um, to the altar and pray. The microphone will be here. There's also a microphone in the center and those who are online and at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, I just encourage you when there is silence to use that time to also pray and just join with us as we blanket this nation in prayer. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus, you are such a wonderful husband to us. Who can be compared to you, God? We just pray right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would give us that perfect, yielded, surrendered heart. You have so much that you want to give us, and we're holding you back, Lord. But we do want the fullness of yourself that you have promised to us so that we will be conduits of your grace instead of obstacles in your path, Lord. We lay our hearts spare before you now, Lord Jesus. Lead us, Holy Spirit, to be honest on those places of our flesh that you are touching that we don't want touched. Let us be willing to confess these things, Lord Jesus. We pray in your mighty name. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, if we have offended you in any way, Lord, show us. We just say how grateful we are that your mercy is so great. Right now, all your, your presence is all that we seek, Lord, but we know that our sins and our iniquities can stop you from hearing us, Lord. We just ask right now that you would show us what we need to give attention to, Lord. We want our weakness to be swallowed up in your strength. God, your presence means holiness. Your presence means life. We need your presence, Lord. Do not send us out from here without it. Do this work in our flesh that needs to be done so we can honor you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, that when we are faithless, you remain faithful. You are a faithful and good husband. 
Thank you for taking this time to show us our wayward hearts. Bring us back to you, Lord. We are before you. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge, Lord. Lord, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Break us open, Lord. We don't want any part of our heart and fragments to go to anyone else. We want the whole of our heart to be your entire possession. Take possession now, Lord Jesus. Make us holy unto the Lord. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the, all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity. I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Lord, how blessed we are to know your forgiveness, to know the blood of Jesus that covers every sin. 
there is no sin too great for you, Lord. We can come to you with everything that we have ever done, ever thought, ever said, and lay it at your feet and stand up free in Christ and washed clean, Lord. We ask that. I ask that, Lord, for myself. God, reveal the sins of my heart that I have so treasured for so long, I no longer acknowledge that they're sin. Reveal them to me. Bring these sins to my mind so that I can confess them and repent of them, Lord. I pray, God, for our churches, Lord, that we will be drawn to repentance. Lord, we carry so much sin in our lives and we do not acknowledge it to you any longer. We are so comfortable with it, Father. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you send across this land, in the churches, in our nation, in our families, and in each of us individually, Lord, a spirit of repentance, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Father God, we just come before you, Lord, and confess just not sitting at your feet, Lord. And that is just speaking to me so much this week, Lord, just how I do not sit at your feet enough, Lord. Too many things, too many distractions in this world pull me from sitting at your feet. And Lord, and I just wanted to share scripture that you have used this week to to speak to me. Um, This is John chapter 11, after Lazarus died, when Jesus finally made his way back to Mary and Martha. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the son of God, even he who comes into the world. It just struck me that I don't think that this was the response maybe that we need to have. Jesus is saying, or you were saying here, I'm the resurrection and the life. You're saying, Martha, let it go and come to me and rest in me. And she's saying, yes, Lord, sort of at a distance. I know that you're God, you're Christ. And Lord, I feel like I'm that so often. I want to be Mary because here's what happens with Mary. When she said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and is calling to you. And when she heard it, she got up quietly and was coming to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the village, but he was still in the place where Mary met him, where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? 
I can't help but notice, Lord, that here you acted after you saw that first Mary fell at your feet, Lord, and was weeping, and it moved you, Lord. I just pray that we would be people that would move you, Lord, because we are sitting at your feet, Lord, that we would have that close connection with you, Lord. And I just repent, Lord, because I have not been that kind of person, Lord. And I just pray for every person here, Lord, who's listening and who's here with us, Lord, that we would just be like Mary, Lord, and fall at your feet and that it would just move you, Lord, to act, to act in us, to act in our country, to act in our churches, Lord, and that we would just be people who, like Mary, were repentant, Lord, who knew that you are the resurrection and the life, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are a forgiving God. Your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I pray, Lord, that you would help those that we've sinned against to be able to be more like you and be able to let go of offenses and also help us to forgive like you forgive. And to be able to let go and to remember them no more. Let it go as far as the east is from the west in our minds. And treat people as if they never sinned. And Lord, I ask for your help with this in, in our lives. This list of humans is hard. But help us and make us more like you, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness.
Lord, you tell us in Jeremiah 17 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. And it says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Indeed, they say to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Lord, we ask that you would take your living and powerful, sharper than two-edged sword word, and come do that cutting and dividing work in our lives, Lord. There is a disease of unbelief, of deceitfulness, of wickedness, of laziness. Lord, of so many things in our heart that need to be cut out. Come and do that purging, refining work through the light of your word. Allow us to be exposed to the brightness of your truth. You say you will bring to light those deep and hidden things. Nothing is to remain in the darkness. And how free we'll be when we do. We praise you, Lord, for your tender touch upon our lives to do this healing and refining work. Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jerusalem in a perpetual backsliding. They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness. Observe. My people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Everyone is given to covetedness, from the prophet even to the priest. Everyone deals falsely, for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of help, health, and there was trouble. O oh Lord, we truly want to be whole and healthy. We repent of this wickedness. We repent of backsliding. We repent of rejecting your word. We repent of covetedness, of dealing falsely of proclaiming peace in a world when there isn't peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Forgive us for not sharing you with the world. Our hands are so full of blood, Lord. We confess and repent of these evils. Come wash us, Lord, and cleanse us. With your blood, we pray in Jesus' name.
Lord, your word says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Oh, forgive me, Lord, for not putting my complete trust in you and not laying everything at, the, at your feet and giving it all over to you. Forgive me, Lord, for holding back. Lord, forgive me for not wanting to give you my all. Lord, forgive me for not waiting patiently for you to answer. Lord, forgive me for praying to you and talking to you, but not waiting to hear from you, God. Forgive me, Lord. You are mighty and faithful. You've always been faithful for all time. Lord, I pray that I would, that your church would see your faithfulness, God, that we would know confidently because you are faithful, Lord, that we would know that and we would follow you. you we would hear from you and obey you, God. Help us to not run after the world, Lord, but to run after you. Lord, you set a path before us. I pray that we would take that path, that we would do it even if it's just one step at a time, Lord. Guide us, walk with us, encourage us. Lord, because you are the lover of our souls, I pray that we would not try to fulfill our souls with the world anymore. Lord, that we would just turn to you because only you can fill us. Only you can satisfy our souls. Lord, may we just turn everything aside and may our day be about glorifying you, Lord. Nothing else. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in your strength, in your guidance. In Jesus' name. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? Uh, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will be not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Dear Lord, just please forgive so many in your church, Lord, who who don't tithe, Lord, and and don't realize, Lord, that it's all yours, Lord. And Lord, like twenty percent of the folks in most churches give eighty percent of the dollars, Lord. And there's literally a curse on on believers from you, Lord, as you displease our efforts, Lord, to to just give a minimal ten percent, Lord, and. Lord, we just ask that that would change, Lord, as it's caused so many problems, Lord, with corrupt governments and having to do the job of the church, Lord, and uh, in many ways, Lord. And we just ask that you would just break that curse, Lord, that you would just move in the hearts of your people, Lord, to, to, to just look to you, Lord, with all that you've given us, Lord. And, and Lord, that 
Lord, your, your promises are so great, Lord. We can't outgive you in our money. We can't get, outgive you in our time, Lord. There's nothing we can do to outgive you, Lord, as you are so, so benevolent to us, Lord, and you just take such joy in just seeing just a mustard seed of faith in our lives, Lord. Help us to, your church, Lord, to be generous in giving to, and to reach out, Lord, and to just look to your face, Lord, and, and just watch all the blessings that you will give, Lord. We just thank you for the victory we have in Jesus, and we thank you for your promises, for they are true. In Jesus' name, amen. Return backsliding, Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord. For I am your husband. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. O oh Lord, if this is the key to the awakening and revival of your church, Lord, that your people would return to you with all their hearts, all the black backsliders, Lord, to come to you. Lord, to recognize that you are our husband, Lord, and that we have forsaken you. We have been unfaithful to you. And if we will just return to you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, return to your word, you will give us shepherds according to your heart, good, godly leaders who are devoted to you, faithful to you, who will teach the truth of your word and lead us in knowledge and understanding. Lord, let us return to you with all our heart, we pray.
wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before your eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless and plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Lord, we speak to the sin of envy, which is a lack of contentment, desiring that which belongs to another or to be like another. Lord, Job 5 says, resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. And Proverbs 14, 30 says, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Proverbs 23, 17 says, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. And Galatians 5, 26 says, Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. But Lord, in Philippians 4, Paul writes, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So we repent of the sin of envy. We repent of being discontented. We want your character, Christ. You, Lord Jesus, are selfless. Matthew 28, 20, 28 tells us that just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. O oh Lord, give us that humble servant heart to not look to others, but to look to you and find our soul's complete satisfaction. For in you we have all that we need. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for your cleansing water, your cleansing blood, your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
O Lord. This is Daniel's prayer. According to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because for our sins and for our iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are reproached to all those around us. Now, therefore, our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications, and for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations in the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deed, deeds, but because of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you for this afternoon. Lord, as our husband, for your goodness and faithfulness and kindness, we thank you for the tender way you touch our flesh. And by your word, purge us of every fleshly defilement and every sinful thought and every carnal desire. Lord, we thank you that you are doing this gracious work of clearing the channel of mercy which our sin has blocked. Lord, make us clean vessels for the Lord, useful instruments in the Master's hand. We want to bring glory to your name, Lord Jesus. We love you with all our heart. Continue to speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus. Search them. Help us, Lord, to guard our hearts, for it is the wellspring of life. Lord, we want that wellspring to be pure and undefiled. Cleanse us and make us whole. For it's in your mighty name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I pray you go out feeling refreshed, your load a little bit lighter, and that you go out in the joy of the Lord. I look forward to seeing you back here 6 o'clock this evening as we lay our petitions before the Lord. Have a blessed afternoon in Jesus' name.